Hello student, today we will discuss about the profit in lieu of salary. I think it will be my another lecture on the shift salary, income from salary. And we are doing all these things as I have given you the statements. The first one is salary or basic salary. We have to add allowances, perquisites and profit in lieu of salary and later on deduction is there under section 16 then you get the income from salary. We have done up to allowances and perquisites. Today we will discuss about the profit in lieu of salary. Will you please continue from the earlier video. Profit in lieu of salary. Profit in lieu of salary. It is under section 17.3. 17.3. Of income tax act. It is profit in lieu of salary. So, what is profit in lieu of salary? Profit in lieu of salary means any amount received by the employer, not as salary, but in place of salary. If you get anything, it can be said as profit in lieu of salary. For example, you can say any compensation received by any employee from his present employer or former employer on termination or modification of his terms of employment then it, this amount should be taken as profit in the absolute. Suppose a person is retired or a person is returns from his service or a person terms of employment has been changed in that case in any amount paid in the name of compensation or any other then this amount should be treated as profit in lieu of salary in place of treated as salary but should be added with the calculation of the income from salary yes so number again you can say any amount due or received from present or former employer before joining into the service or after cessation of his service. That means any amount paid to any employee by present employer. Present employment with whom he is doing his employment, doing his service, providing his service and from the former employer that means earlier he has done he has worked with another employer then he is called as earlier employer if he receive any money before joining his service as an advance or whatever may be and after cessation of his employment that means after leave his service if he receive any money it should also be said as profit in lieu of salary so next point again you can say any amount received by the employee from unrecognized provident for unrecognized provident fund or any other firm here only employer's contribution or interest on that part is to be considered suppose employer paid anything for the unrecognized provident fund i will later on we will discuss about the provident fund, then I will say what is unrecognized provident fund. If any amount paid by the employer on behalf of employee, it is assumed as employee's income, so this amount is also be taken as profit in lieu of salary. Again, another you can say, another example is key main insurance policy. Key main insurance policy means key main that means in an organization, in a, in a business, generally there are some employee who is more important, who is most important for the business. If that employee leave the service, 
then then the organization or the business house will face or suffer losses in that case for the employee employer make some insurance if that part, that employee leave the service then this compensation will get by the employer in that case a portion of your employee is suppose employee is not leaving the service but he is he become handicapped in that case a portion of money may be given to the employee by the employer who is who is actually received by the employer against the key main insurance policy that amount should also be treated as profit in lieu of salary so these are examples of profit in lieu of salary you keep in your mind that profit in lieu of salary is an amount received by the employee from present past or former employer not as salary but it is treated as in place of salary so i am whatever point i have told to you then i just i give the point to you for your for your understanding so number one point is yes you can say profit in case of profit following are the profit in lieu of salary following you can write following are treated as profit in lieu of salary following are treated as treated as profit in lieu of salary yes i will give some points for you number 1 yes any compensation i have told you already any compensation due to or received any any compensation any compensation due to or received yes due to or received yes by an employee by an employee from yes from present or from present or former earlier that means former employer from present or former employer yes for yes but or against against Terms of employment. Terms of employment or modification of modification of terms of employment. Yes. I have described you this one, and number two is it is number one. Number two is any amount due to or received. Any amount due to or received. Yes, due to or received by any employee. any employee by any employee from from employer from employer before 
joining, before joining and and after cessation of employment. Cessation means leave. Cessation of employment. Yes. Number two is any amount due to or received by any employee from employer. Yes. Before joining and after cessation of employment. It is number two. Number three is Number three, any amount received received by an employee by an employee, yes, from the unrecognized provident fund from Unrecognized provident fund and from unrecognized provident fund or any other fund, any other fund, yes, any other fund, yes, which does not consist. Who is does not consist? Who is does not consist? Yes. Consist employer's contribution and interest on part on that part does not consist. Employers. Yes, does not consist, you can write here, does not consist employees, employees' own contribution, contribution, and interest on that part. That means only employer's amount, which is employed, whatever the amount given by the employer, it is to be taken as received by the employee. His own contribution to the unrecognized provision fund should not be considered. Only amount received by employee from his from unrecognized provision fund or any other fund which does not consist of employer employee's own contribution and interest that. Part. That means only employer's contribution and interest on that part, if, it, if anything received by the employee, should be taken as profit in lieu of salary. And number four is amount received on key main insurance policy. Amount received, yes, received on key main. insurance policy. Yes, these are generally called as profit in lieu of salary. I think you can understand. I have already explained all these things. Yes, so these are the called as profit in lieu of salary. That means they are getting money from present employer, former employer, not in the form of salary, but in other form. If they get any money, it should be taken as profit in lieu of salary, should also be added with the salary on computation of income from salary. Yes, it is the point of profit in lieu of salary. On discussion of profit in lieu of salary, I have to say some points here. I am mentioning all these points here. That means there are some retirement benefits I should mention here which will be required for you for computation of salary income. Retirement benefit. Yes. Under section 
section 10 under section 10 under section 10 of the income tax act there are some items which are exempted from tax yes in case of section 10 there are certain items who is have relation with the employee so these items exempted items who is have relation with the employee have to be considered in case of computation of salary income yes this may be retirement benefit suppose provident fund provident fund yes a provident fund means what? Provident fund is a fund which is created by the employee where employer also contribute same amount in the name of the employee and the debt amount the fund which is created by employee and employer both at the time of retirement employee get, will get the benefit of provident fund it is provident fund so at the time of retirement, in case of provident fund, they get money. What is the treatment of provident of the person who getting the provident fund money? You always mind keep in your mind that an employee who may who may have retired from any organization may have to work in another organization. Yes, he may retire from one, he may continue to with another organization. In that case, on during the service period, he may get the provision fund refund from the former employer. Yes, that situation may arise. Besides provision fund, there are also gratuity support. Gratuity. Yes, leave and casement. Yes, pension. Yes. And there are various items which are actually required for computation of salary income and it, so you can say again leave engagement, leave table concession, leave table, leave table concession, yes. Leave table concession. Again, you can say uh, voluntary retirement. Voluntary retirement. So there are various items which have relation with the employee. So these items we have to discuss before solving our salary problem. So here, first I will start with the provision fund. What is provident fund? It is important for theoretical part also and it is important for practical point of view. Provident fund. What is provident fund? I have told you. But provident fund is created how? It is created in case of employee. A portion of money is deposited by the employee himself and another portion is also deposited by the employer on behalf of employee. Yes, there may be at the time of retirement this fund may be realized by the employee. So, uh, during the service period also it has the treatment. The provident fund has the treatment during the service period also. During the service period also there may be employees contribution, employees own contribution, Yes, employer's contribution. Interest accumulated. On provident fund. Interest equal. These are happen during the service period. So this treatment you will have to done when the employee providing his service. Besides that, there may be refund 
of the provision fund money, refund is also to be treated. So we will discuss provision fund as a whole. So in case of provision fund, there are generally four types of provision fund. One is statutory provision fund. Statutory provision fund. Number two is recognized provision fund. Number three is unrecognized provision fund. Number four is pub number four is public provision fund. There are four types of provision fund. So, statutory provision fund what? Statutory provision fund means provision fund which is created by, which is governed by the Provision Fund Act 1925. It is Provision Fund Act, according to the Provision Fund Act 1925. It is generally in this case, government employee, semi-government employee, yes, ABLAC, these are to be included. Yes, government employees and semi-government employees. Government employees, semi-government employees, in case of government employees, there may be armed forces also. So, recognized provision fund means what? Recognized provision fund means provision fund which is recognized by the income tax department. If income, income tax recognizes any provision fund, which is called as recognized provision fund. It is for the only private sector, private sector employees. Yes, private sector employees. And again, unrecognized provision fund. Unrecognized provision fund means recognized uh, provision fund, which is not recognized by the income tax department, this is called as it is also for private sector employees. Private employees. Yes, both are private employees. And public provision fund. What is public provision fund? Public provision fund actually, it is actually created for the self-employed, self-employed people. It is it is created on 1st July 1968. This public provision fund, as these three provision funds, is related to the employee only. Employee only. But there are other persons also who are not getting the benefit of provision fund. So, government has created another provision fund in 1st July 1968 for self-employed people. Though it is open to employee also, it is open to all. So, this is called as public provision fund. Any here, in both these three provision fund, here all these three provision fund, their employee's contribution along with employer's contribution also there. But in case of public provision fund, only self contribution is there. Yes, there is no any because it may not be related with the employee. If some employee, if any employee is going to keep money in public provision fund, no money will be paid by his employer. He has to deposit money from his self. Yes, so it is these are the different types of provision fund. These three provision fund actually related with the employee. Here, employee's contribution, employer's contribution, both. But here, only self-contribution is there. It is not that with the employee specially, it is, it is open to all. Though it is started with for the self-employed people on 1st July 1968, it is open to all. Anybody can make deposit on public provision, but he will get the benefit of rebate under, he benefit of, rebate under section 8 PC, 
or he may get benefit at the time of refund also. Yes, so this provision fund is created. I think you got the conception of provision fund. Next, we will go to the tax treatment of provision fund. Tax treatment in case of statutory provision fund, recognized provision fund, unrecognized provision fund. How is it to be taxed? What are to be the tax treatment? In case of public provision fund, I will give you later. First, I will cover all these three because all three above three is only related to the employee. There, both employees as well as employees' contribution also there. Yes, we will start. Provident fund, treatment of provident fund. Yes, tax treatment. Tax treatment of provident fund. What are tax treatment? How you can do the tax treatment? Yes, I have told you there may be employees own contribution yes yes and number two there may be employer's contribution employer's contribution yes and interest on accumulated balance that means money which have already been deposited by both in the name of employee in some way there may be interest may be earned on that fund it is called an interest accumulated balance interest interest on interest on accumulated balance yes and number four you can say number four yes refund refund number five again another point is there number five it is transfer balance of unrecognized provision fund to recognized provision fund Transfer from unrecognized provident fund to recognized provident fund. Yes, transfer from unrecognized provident fund to recognized provident fund. Yes, now. Now we will make it, it is actually, there are three provision fund I have told you, so I will make three columns. One is, yes, one is for statutory provision fund. Statutory provident fund. That means provident fund for government employees, semi government employees, which is covered under provident fund act 1925. And recognized provident fund. Recognized provident fund. Yes, unrecognized provident fund. Unrecognized. Provident fund. Yes, these three funds are generally app applicable to our employee only, where employee as well as employer both contributions are there. So, first one is if employee in case of employee's own contribution, that means any amount 
deposited by the employee himself. In that case, in case of statutory provision part, it is fully exempted. Fully exempted. No need to consider it is in case of government employee, semi government fully exempted. Any amount you get, uh, employee's own contribution, it is. So in case of employee's own contribution, sir, the correct key. I am telling you the employee's own contribution, not the employer's contribution. In case of employee's own contribution, fully, you write, fully qualify for, fully qualify for, yes, deduction under section 80C. Yes, under section 80C, what are in the under section 80C? In 80C, there are certain investments, there, there, are, there, are, there are certain funds which are mentioned by the income tax department. By investing any money on that fund, you can get exempt, you can get deduction under section 80C up to a certain limit. It is generally 150,000. If you deposit any money on that particular fund, then this money up to 150,000 can be deducted under section 80C. This employee's own contribution can also be treated for treatment under section 80C. In case of recognized provident fund also fully qualified for deduction under section 80C. Same. Employee's own condition. But here it does not qualify. I recognize provision fund, any amount contributed by the employee himself is not qualified under section 80C. And next, I next employer's contribution. That means how much if same money, I am telling you the same amount of money generally contributed by the employer in the fund of employee where benefit will get at the time of retirement by the employee. So this employer's contribution in case of statutory provision fund, it is fully exempted. Yes, fully exempted. In case of In case of recognized provision fund, in case of recognized provision fund, over 12% of salary is taxable. That means over up to 12% of salary is exempted. Salary, suppose employee gets salary of rupees 50,000. Yes, employee gets salary of rupees 50,000. But, but he employer's contribution to the provident fund is suppose 8,000. Employer's contribution to the provident fund is 8,000 suppose. So here, 12% of salary how much? 12% of 50,000. It means 12. Yes, 6,000, yes. He can gain exemption, he can claim exemption up to 6,000. So, amount received by employer, amount paid by employer 8,000, he gets exemption 6,000, taxable how much? 2,000. 2,000 is taxable. Yes, employer's contribution in case of recognized provision fund up to 12% of salary is Exempted over 12% of salary is taxable. Over 12%. More than 12% is taxable. Yes? So, it is employer's contribution in case of recognized provident fund. And here, 12% of salary means I have given you the side. Salary for different purpose. Here, salary means basic salary plus DA, if enter, plus commission on time. 
I have given you the sign, and you look to the sign. So next, in case of anti-dogmatic provision fine, it should be ignored. Ignore, definitely you leave it. Ignore. It is the treatment of employer's contribution for three types of employees. I think you understand. And next point is interest on accumulated balance. Interest on accumulated balance means employee contribute a contributed amount, employer contributed amount, a fund is created, fund is deposited with certain fund. Certain, suppose either bank or post office or whatever may be, in that deposit amount, interest may accumulate yearly. This interest, whatever interest accumulated, the interest treatment will be there. So, what will the treatment? Interest accumulated balance in case of statutory provision fund fully exempted. Fully exempted. Government employee or semi government employee, no need to. Go to tax treatment for interest on accumulated balance. In case of recognized provision fund, excess of 9.5%, excess of 9.5% of interest, excess of 9.5% of interest taxable. Yes, excess of 9.5%. What is 9.5 percent of interest? 9.5 percent means rate. You can say rate of interest. 9.5 percent. Suppose on the accumulated balance, employer getting, ah, sorry, employee getting this fund on the accumulated balance. Suppose employee interest is size 13 percent. Yes, 13 percent. But up to 9.5 percent is exempted. In that case, you have 13 percent. Suppose he gets rupees 10,000, which is 13 percent of the accumulated balance. Interest is it? Suppose he is getting interest 10,000 yearly. Interest 10,000. Yes, it is 10,000 is equal to suppose it is 13 percent. But up to 9.5 percent is exempted. How much 9.5 percent is? 10,000 into 13, 9.5. Yes, is it? 9 you deter determine it. How much the amount? It should be deducted, and balance will be taxable. Yes, I think you get the point. And next point is, in case of unrecognized provision fund. Interest on accumulated balance ignored. Leave it ignored. Yes. Next, you come to the point refund. If provision in case of provision fund, which is refund, refund may be in different times. It may be during the service period also. He may leave some service. He may go to the another service. In that case also. For former, former employer, he will get the refund. If he retires, then he will get the refund. If he dies, then also the refund will be paid to his legal heir. Yes? So anyway, we are treating the employees only. So refund, in case of statutory provision fund, refund is fully exempt. Yes, fully exempted. And in case of recognized provision fund, generally exempted in all cases. Yes, exempted in all cases except except that means in some cases it may not be except if the employee except. If or when, when the employee leave his service Yes, leave his service be 
before leaving service, he leaving service on his own accord, on his own accord, before completion of of five years. But I have written in here, exempted, generally exempted, in all cases, except, what is the exception? When the employee leave his service, that means he leave his service on his own accord, according to his own wish, own accord, yes, before completion of five years. If his service was completed five years of service, and he leave his service according to his own wish, then he cannot get the benefit of exemption. Yes, but in case of anti-tokenized provision fund, yes, employer's contribution or interest on that part is to be added in salary. If refund is there, a portion is to be now taxable. What are the portion? Employer's contribution. Employer's contribution and interest on that part, employer's contribution and interest on that part is to be to be added with salary it to be added with it to be added with salary you have to i have already in case of profit in your salary discussion i have i have told you that employer's contribution and interest on that part in case of unidentified to be found refund that amount should be added with the salary yes but salary you can write salary income of the year. Yes, yes, but subject to relief under section 891. Yeah. Section 891 is given for relief. That means employer's contribution is continuing from long period of time. In that case, if he added, if he added all this amount, then there may be more salary income of for that particular year. Therefore, it, it can be break up, which is given in the 89-1, which is called as relief. So anyway, so it is in case of employer's contribution, in case of unrecognized provision fund, in case of refund, employer's contribution and interest on that part should be to be added with the salary income of the SSC, yes, and subject to the relief under section 89.1. So, last, next is refund, sorry, transfer, transfer from unrecognized to recognized provident fund. It is only in case of unrecognized provident fund, not for others. In case of unrecognized provident fund, if any Amount is transferred from unrecognized to recognized. That means this fund is continuing as unrecognized provision fund. In sometimes it may be converted to recognized provision fund. In that case, the amount which would have which which would have been taxable had the fund been taken as recognized provision fund. That means if the fund which is transferred from unrecognized to recognized if you assume that fund was as recognized, then what amount would have would have we have to add or taxable at that part? That amount should be now added with the now amount will be become addition with the salary. So I will write it here. Transfer 
times 5 balance 5 just you continue with the lower level this times 5 times 5 from unrecognized provision fund to recognized provision fund it will be only in case of unrecognized provision fund yes amount which would have been it is this amount who is yes amount who is would would have been yes to amount which would have been taxable taxable had the fund been had the fund been yes had the fund been recognized provident fund that means RPF yes added is added to salary is added to salary you if cash fund balance is there from unrecognized to recognized provision fund, what amount? If the fund is assumed as recognized, what amount we have to add? That's what amount we have to calculate. That amount now should be calculated and should be added with the salary. Yes, this is the these are the treatment of provision three types of provision fund. Yes, statutory, recognized and unrecognized provision fund. I think you understand it. And last one is public provision fund. I have told you public provision fund is not related with the employee only, it is open to all. In case of public provision fund, it is open to all. It is open to all, anybody. Employee can also make public provision fund deposit and other self employed person also make for public provision fund. So in that case also, any contribution mutual to public provision fund Public provision fund is qualifies for deduction under section eighty C. Yes, here it is under section eighty C. I have told you what is ATC, ATC there are certain investment funds or investing on the, these funds under section ATC deduction is allowed by the income tax department. So I think in the next class we will discuss about the gratuity and pension and I think for today I in my class and thank you, thank you very much. You please continue the video from very beginning. Yes, uh, I think I will I will meet again in the next video. Thank you. Thank you very much.